Hello wonderful people of the internet. Today I am in a different country. I'm in Italy but I still wanted to get a video out to you because I just finished about half an hour ago a TV series called Arcane which um, I believe is pretty famous and it's on Netflix and it's based on League of Legends which is a mobile game and uh, I'm about two years late to the party but I've watched it and I'd really like to share my thoughts with you. I'd like to talk to you about it so without any further ado let's get into it. So, of course, full spoilers for Arcane Season 1, I think Season 2 is in the works, um, but full spoilers for the first season of Arcane, if you haven't watched it, I'd actually really recommend it, it's only 9 episodes long, about 9 hours of your time, and then it's done, and you won't regret it, it's such a good series, it's masterful storytelling, it's really, really good. So, full spoilers, you've been warned, let's get into it. So, um, I've got no criticisms of this show at all. I'm just going to go in, into it saying that I liked everything about this show. I thought that everything was executed flawlessly and I, I'm i just really happy about this series. So, to put it in a nutshell, Arcane is about two sisters, Vi and Powder slash Jinx, who went through a very traumatic event when they were younger. To them was basically Powder's fault and it's about them, a couple of years after, trying to reconnect Basically, that's a nutshell. There's loads of side stories, side characters, mini plots that are outside of that plot, but I think that is the main summary that you could give to sell it. So um, it's set in a steampunk fantasy world where there's a top size city called Piltover, which is on the surface of the earth. It's rich, it's full of you know, advanced technology, Every, you know, everyone's happy there. And then you've got the other side, which is called Zorn, which is an underground city. Although it's not underground, there's a bridge, but most of it is underground. And there it's you know, the, the crime area, there's drugs and stuff, and that's the world. Just say here, I loved all of these characters and I actually found it really incredible that I cared about all of these subplots so much because that hasn't happened to me before. With all the other shows that I've watched that have had many subplots like um, The Witcher or Stranger Things, I have had a, a plot that I care about the most and the rest of them I'm kind of like, okay, get back to where we were please. But in this, that wasn't the case. It was in the beginning perhaps where some of the plots were less developed, but then as the series went on, I got really invested in all of them and I was happy whenever anyone turned up. But the ones that really stood out to me the most were of course the main storyline between Vi and Jinx. That was incredibly written and the first three episodes which take place before the main events of the series, the kind of prologue of the, se the season. Was, uh, were incredible. It's like I was not expecting anything that came along. The only thing that I really knew about the series was that Jinx slash Powder turned evil eventually, and that was it. That was all I knew. And um, I was not expecting what happened in the third episode, which, if you're not clued in, basically Powder blows up um, all of her friends and inadvertently leads to the death of her surrogate father. And it was insane. Vi disowns her, and then she's taken in by the main villain of the series, Silco. And that, that blew my mind. That was uh, probably my favorite moment of the series. I was crying. I was so surprised. It was so, so good. But that plot was really the one I was the most hooked on, because there was that emotional core of seeing whether these sisters could reconnect, and also just seeing how this event in episode three impacted both characters was just... I also really like the character of Victor, who is kind of your mad scientist, but done really, really well. He is, um, he is working alongside Jace to create devices for a thing that they've called Hextech, which is when they utilize science and magic to create technology that can improve the world. And initially, there's a bit of drama about the morality of it all, but then after the time skip, after the third episode, they've got their entire basis. For, uh, the, the society is now revolving around Hextech, and there's demand for new developments. And following the discovery that Victor is dying from some sort of lung problem, he decides that he's going to try and get Hextech to develop to the point where he can use it to heal people, where he can actually use it for different uses. And um, that leads him down a road of corruption, and it was just really interesting to see. And I just thought Victor was such an interesting character, and I loved his plotline. Jace was too, but out of the two, I was like, Victor takes the cake. He was so, so good. But beyond those two plotlines, everything else was incredible. I loved Mel, I loved Caitlyn, 
I loved all, just I, all of the main characters and Silco, Silco was amazing. I could just go on for so long about every single character, but I'll just point out my favourites there. Um, I, I really enjoyed uh, Jinx's and Silco's relationship. When there was, they had this really twisted but almost wholesome father-daughter uh, dynamic that turned up towards the end. More wholesome on the side of Silco perhaps than for Jinx, because for Jinx he was manipulating her, he was encouraging her to be violent, and uh, kind of led her to the immoral lifestyle that she started leading. But on the side of Silco, Jinx was his human side. He was, in the first few episodes, I thought quite one note. I was like, oh no, we've got a moustache twirling villain on our hands. But but then, as the series went on and it was revealed that he really does love Jinx and he really does care for her, that just blew my mind and I was, I cared, uh, and when he died and he, I think he told Jinx that she was perfect and his moment where he's sitting by the statue of Vanda, who I loved, I loved Vanda and I was really sad to see him die, but when he was sitting by that statue and talking about how he's about to get everything that he ever wanted but he can't have it because he'd have to forsake his daughter, it's just really good. I just really liked it. Um, so all the character work was incredible. All the plots were really interesting. And I also loved the world building. It felt unique. I loved the steampunk element. I loved how the magic worked and how it was being used. It was just also so good. I also really liked Grayson, who was a enforcer who died in the third episode, I believe. But I really liked her while she was around. I'm sad that she died. And I also really liked the... Um, the other enforcer guy called Marcus, who was corrupted by Silco, having this moral dilemma because he he had a daughter and he wanted the best for her, and Silco started threatening him by saying, "I'm going to kill your daughter if you don't do what I say." But he wanted to get out. It was all just really good. I also um I really really ship Vi and Caitlin, and I hope they get together in the next season because. I, I, I was just like losing my mind the entire time and I, I think it's canon, I'm not sure, but I hope it is. Um, I did ship Victor and Jace, but then that wasn't to be. That's a shame, but I do really ship him and Mel. And it was really nice to see Mel fall for Jace. I don't, at least I don't think initially she was interested in a romantic, romantic relationship with him. I think she was more manipulating him, but then she fell in love with him. And she, she went for a lot of development as it was. It was just, it was awesome and I loved it. And that ending, it was, it was terrible that her and uh, that Jinx and Vi, that is, didn't reunite and see eye to eye again. But in hindsight, that never would have happened. That never could have happened. Jinx was too different to who she once was. She was too kind of plagued by not just her her neurodivergence which was definitely an influence I think and handled really well as well it never felt like that was what was encouraging her to perform acts of violence it definitely more showed um, uh, it more caused indecisiveness and made her doubt herself so I think that was a good representation of that obviously I can't really say because I'm not part of the group that it is representing but I thought it was definitely handled a bit better than being like she is violent because she's crazy um, but it was really sad to not see them reconnect and I Oh, that ending man, that cliffhanger, I'm so upset that we're gonna have to wait to see what happens. I hope Mel's alive. I don't really care about Jace, but I hope he's alive. I think the rest of them will die, but I'm really excited for season two. I can't wait to see what happens. So um, I'll wrap the review up there because I haven't actually got anything more to say. I've said everything I can and I'd risk rambling on if I said anything else. So I really like the season. It was 10 out of 10. I loved it and I'd recommend it. So we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Have a good one. Bye.